So the research finally caught up with Joe D and, and my bro science. So now when people go, oh, you're crazy, you're just a strength guy, you're stupid, you're dumb, you, that's, it's, you don't know any better, you need to do more research. Well, now even the research is back in what I say, so f*** it. We are uh, making a quick breakfast. Apparently people were interested in, in what I eat when I'm not eating cottage cheese. So one of my other quick favorites. A trend with me is I only make things that are idiot proof. And one of them is hard boiled eggs. So I'm going to make a bunch of hard boiled eggs. This is the greatest invention ever. I don't know if you guys have seen this thing. It is called Chef's Choice Egg Cooker. I guess it's really not that complicated. But you fill it with a little bit of water. You, put, you can put up to six eggs on there. You put the, the cover on and it steams the eggs. The timer's set for eight and a half minutes. I have the perfect hard boiled egg. You set it and you, and you forget it. Shout out to Rob, my man from Australia. Gave this to me. He visited the gym like maybe five or six years ago at this point, and he gave that to me as a gift, because he saw I was always eating hard boiled eggs in between my sessions at the gym, and I have used it almost every day since. So, uh, hard boiled eggs will be for breakfast. I'm gonna pack a snack and some lunch. I'm gonna go through my metabolic meals. If anybody followed my rebuilt program, these double chocolate peanut butter squares from metabolic meals are Friggin' scrumptious. And I think I'm gonna go with turkey breast and mashed cauliflower. It will be lunch slash early dinner, however long I'm at the gym. Of course, cottage cheese for a snack too. I'll pack a bunch of water and I got my, my meals for the day. That's Alexa, my new, my new girlfriend. Does Ashley know about this? She does, she's not, she's accepted her so far. Alexa, good morning. Do you know what today is? I have no idea. A day to celebrate all things bacon, including bacon and eggs, BLTs, bacon wrapped shrimp on the barbie, and even bacon bubble gum. <laughs> or a bit ham it up. Was that a joke, uh, Alexa, with the ham it up thing? Bacon gum? Did you hear that? Alexa, what's my projected squat max? Sorry, I didn't understand the question I had. Uh, this thing sucks. Look at that's intensity and that is focus right there. Bacon. Go get it! Have you been working on Brock's uh, stride length for the first uh, he, 10 he's, yards? He's very short and quick, very fast twitch. He explodes, he chases the bacon, and then he naps for about six hours. Brock has a very clean diet. You would, uh, it's not even really Atkins. It would just be, it's all protein. He does two chicken breasts a day and bacon treats throughout the day and whatever I don't finish for dinner. What's his training split look like? Is it like west side for, for dogs? It's, uh, yeah, but he, a lot more recovery time in there. Try right, Brock. And you annoy everybody. It's nice to not have traffic one day. So while, while we are heading to the gym, can, I, can we talk a little training? Can I get something off my chest? Yesterday, the, the past couple days, I've gotten a ton of social media notifications from a lot of different coaches, friends, uh, people who take our CPPS certification, tagging me in this study that just came out. There was a study that just done on 
the effects of heavy resisted sprinting, sled sprinting on speed. Basically, the study took a bunch of soccer players and they broke them up into two groups. They all sprinted twice a week. One group did unresisted, regular 20 meter sprints. The other group did heavy sled sprints and they used, it was pretty heavy, um, I believe they used 80% of the athlete's body weight. For a, a 200 pound guy, what is that, like uh, 100, 160 pounds uh, on the sled. So pretty, pretty good weight, a, definitely a lot heavier than all the speed gurus and track and field experts who are anti-resisted sled sprints in general. But if they do perform them, they the, the golden rule is never sprint with more than 10% of your body weight. It alters technique. It makes you, it trains you to be slow, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with my work, Mr. Sampson, but since 19 friggin' 99, I have been adamant, and I have gotten more adamant each year as I have gotten more experience Anybody who knows me knows how adamant I am about heavy sled drags and resisted sprinting over, I never followed the rule of only using 10% or less of your body weight on a sled when you sprint. And the reason why I was so adamant about it, because ever since I started implementing heavy sled sprints and heavy ass sled dragging, it always worked it got athletes faster. It didn't just get them stronger, it didn't train them to be slow, they actually got faster. And how do I know this? Because I electrically timed all the sprints. And this ranges from average high school kids to high level, you know, fastest guy at the NFL combine, high level college and professional athletes. Guys that showed up to my facility and were fast, they got faster with this type of training and every year that went by not only wasn't their technique negatively altered most of the time the heavy sled dragging enhanced their technique but anyway i've i've been i've been preaching this for years and a lot of times there's a lot of coaches that i know are smarter than me 100 percent, they have a higher iq they talk better than me they use bigger words than me but the one thing I know they don't have over me is friggin' experience, and it shows they didn't have experience because anyone that would be anti heavy sled dragging and, and resisted sprinting for speed athletes, to me, clearly, you just never did it. You never implemented it. Because if you implemented it and implemented it properly, you would know that it works. I've had I've trained the fastest guy at the NFL Combine four different years, kids that dominated high school combines, NFL guys, you name it. I've trained on an average from five to 15 athletes for the NFL Combine or NFL Pro Days every year since 1999. Do the math on that. I, I've, plus all my general, my regular clients, I have coached over 30,000 electrically timed 10 and 20 yard sprints. So I, I think I know what I'm talking about. I know what I experienced and I'm not gonna go back and try to rewrite history. This shit works. So now this study comes out and they, they take these soccer players, half of them perform unresisted sprints twice a week for eight weeks, half of them perform resisted sprints twice a week for eight weeks with 80% other body weight, pretty heavy. Guess what happened? Doo -doo -doo -doo. The freaking group that did the heavy resisted sprints got faster. So the research finally caught up with Joe D and, and my bro science. So now when people go, oh, you're crazy, you're just a strength guy, you're stupid, you're dumb, you, that's, it's, you don't know any better, you need to do more research. Well, now even the research is back in what I say, so f*** it. Go inside. Now I'm all, I feel like uh, I'm all fired up. Very passionate about that subject. So. Yeah, cause you know when you, you may have never experienced this, but you know when you know you're right about something? <laughs> uh, no offense, but uh, you know, it's just, that was one of those things I knew I was right. And I don't claim to always be right, but that was one I will argue to death with anyone. Hey, actually, 
This thing right here, why is this here? For heavy ass sled dragging and, and, and heavy sled pushing. Most of our 10 yard sprint record times at the Franco's gym were done when we did kind of a, a contrast training method where we would push a heavy sled or sprint with a heavy sled and then rest a couple seconds, a minute, and then perform an unresisted sprint. In fact, Keith Williams pushed, we did uh, a heavy sled push, walked back to the line, rested a couple seconds, and he ran the all-time fastest electrically timed 10-yard sprint into Franco's history. Come on, drive the thing. Get that full extension, now faster. Good. Nobody else was saying it. There was no research that you could find to back what we were saying. So these studies that I'm now quoting, they're not in our special strength manual because we were doing this shit before the studies came out. I'm done. This is my best friend there. And she's from Toronto. She got a huge pop. Oh, you were, this is in Toronto. Yeah, she got a huge, like, they, like they love her. I was so happy for her. Ah! Oh, there she is. Hi, little raptors here. <laughs> Yo, two years ago, you were friggin' in the gym. When am I gonna get some Liv Morgan gear? Oh, when they make it, hopefully soon. If I don't have a uh, t-shirt on my doorstep the day after they make it, I will no longer speak with you. Rocker. Hey. Rocker. It's my little specialty move. Yeah, you know that's my favorite because remember how bad your flexibility yeah. was? Like you couldn't even move. You were like a freaking guitar string. No. Now you're Gumby. Okay. Well, nip up. <laughs> nice! Hips come back and really force the knees out, 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 ease into the box, pause for a second. When you come up, keep forcing the knees out. I went on a little bit of a rant during the beginning of this vlog. I did want to just address proper technique when it comes to sled dragging or pushing a sled because like any exercise, if you do it improperly, you're not gonna get the most out of it. I just wanna address the two biggest mistakes people make and maybe it's the reason why some people don't get too much out of their sled dragging or their resisted sprints. Number one, it's the, the force application, the angle at which your foot strikes the ground. So what you see them do is this stomp thing where they kind of come. The problem is when you drag a sled or push a sled in that manner, you're applying force pretty much straight 
down into the ground. And we need to apply the force horizontally back. Instead of driving the knee up and stomping, we keep the shin about parallel to the ground and we, I use the cue, punch your knee forward. Not up, forward. So watch the difference. Knee comes forward, apply force back, forward, back. One of the cues I give my athletes is I tell them to keep their shin as low to the ground as possible. Popular flaw number two is you hear heavy, you know, heavy sprints, heavy ass sled dragging, and you go too heavy, and you're not able to fully extend once your foot strikes the ground. So you don't want to go so heavy that you're taking short choppy steps and just kind of not fully extended. You want to go as heavy as possible, but with the ability to, when the foot strikes, fully extend. You want to be able to fully finish each stride. If you're taking those short choppy steps, that's not going to help with our speed. It's not going to help us cover more ground. It's not going to help with that force application. Make sure you're really paying attention to those two things. Shin stays low to the ground, punch the knee forward, apply force back into the ground, and when you apply that force, finish each stride. You need that hip flexor flexibility. Finish that stride. If you can't, you're going a little bit too heavy, lighten the load, and try it again. Increase that speed, son. What do you got going on this weekend, Mr. Sampson? Nothing, I'm on uh, anti-inflammatories and antibiotics. <laughs> so you can't do anything. I, I live on anti-inflammatories. I would have not left my house uh, since 1992 if uh, being on anti-inflammatories meant you're not allowed to do anything. You don't go hard <laughs> like I do, that's why. You know I'm coming home, like, yeah, unlock the door. Guys, I'm home. Daddy's home? Oh yeah, let's make it. Gee, thanks for that. I thought they stopped caring when they were like 16 or 17, but it already started. I took all the Christmas Yeah, you didn't, like, what? You should at least wait until New Year's. You're so unfestive. What is this? You never saw one of these? It's a, this is like industrial strength booger sucker. Um, shout out to Stephanie McMahon, gave me this booger sucker. Look back. These DeFrancos are strange people. Very. Oh yeah. There it goes. Uh, like this? Yeah! Where's Ava? Where's Ava? <laughs> hey, when I do that, Ava? Look, when I do that, go! Oh, ow, ow! I'm gonna beat you up. Ow! Ah! Stop! Daddy, I do that for me! Oh my god! Don't drop her on her head. Wait, if I get if I get this, I get all the spinach dip at Houston's. No! All mine. If I miss it, you guys could split it. Look over there, dead bird. Remember, right? Oh, watch that. <laughs> Ready? Go. Walk. Yeah, good job, man. Keep going, keep going. Come on, Daddy. keep going. Remember your, your uh, remember your YouTube, no. <laughs> do you remember your YouTube debut for the DeFranco Nation to see? Maybe, Mr. Sampson, you could go, no. into, go into the archives. There is video footage of when me and Ashley first started dating. She got me a birthday cake. Oh my God, you just And so remember, and mommy, I almost, we almost broke up because her sprinting form was so bad. She was like, she was so happy to tell me she got a cake and she ran. But if we pull up that video and you see no, that, your up. legs were fat, you were all, you were just doughy. Like, I don't know what I saw. I got you, you must have really had a great. No, I don't want to, it's a surprise. Yeah, but I want to show that. Yeah, come on. Oh my God, we're gonna run! <laughs> we're gonna run! Everybody take note, don't run like that. But, 
On top of that, if you look at her now, she's 140 now. When you were like 127 there, and you, you were like, you were like a little bit of a fat bastard back then, a little bit, a little bit. Because all he fed me was fried calamari. And mommy. But I mean, you weren't too good looking either. What well, I look? What, how long are you gonna be at the pool? Oh, so how long are you going to be at the pool? What pool are you at? Alright, well I just wanted to see how why you called me seventeen times. I guess for nothing. 